In this video, you're gonna wrap up the two-part series on geolocation. In the last one, we got the data flowing, and in this one, we're gonna make it a little more useful. Instead of rendering latitude and longitude information as text, instead what we're gonna do is render a clickable link. A user will be able to click that link when they receive the location from someone else. It's gonna bring them over to Google Maps and they'll be able to view exactly where the other user is. This is gonna be much more useful than spitting out the text, latitude, and longitude. Now, in order to get that done, we are going to need to tweak how we transmit this data. The way we send the data is still fine over inside of index.js. We're still going to emit create location message, but inside of server, instead of emitting a new message, we need to emit something else entirely. We're going to set up a new event called new location message. We're going to emit that and then over inside of index.js, we'll write a handler for new location message, similar to new message, but distinctly different. Instead of rendering some text, it's going to help us render a link. Now, in order to get started, before we can do any of this, we have to figure out exactly what sort of URL structure we're going to use to get that data, the latitude and longitude information, showing up correctly in Google Maps. And there's actually a pretty uniform way to set up the URL, which is going to make this really easy. To show you exactly what URL we're going to be using, let's go ahead and open up a new tab. The URL is going to go to https colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com forward slash maps. Now from here, we are going to be providing a query parameter and the query parameter we'll be specifying is called Q and it expects the latitude and longitude to be the value separated by a comma. Now we actually have that here, although there is a little space between the comma and the minus sign. Either way, we can copy this value, head back over into the other tab, paste it in and just remove the space. With this in place, we now have a URL that we can use inside of our application. Now, when I hit enter, we are going to view a map at the correct location, but you'll notice that URL changes. That's perfectly fine. As long as we send the user to this URL, it doesn't really matter what it ends up becoming. I'm going to hit enter. You can see right away we are getting a Google map. And as the page loads, the URL is indeed going to change. Now we're looking at something completely different from what we typed in. But the actual pin, this red pin, it is correct within a couple of houses. I won't tell you my exact address, but it is pretty close to accurate. Now with that knowledge, we can generate a URL that follows that same format spit that out inside of the website, and we'll have that clickable link where someone can view the location of someone else. To get started, let's go ahead and move into Atom, into server.js, and instead of emitting a new message event, we're going to emit new location message. Now we don't have a handler for that over in index.js, but that's perfectly fine. We'll set that up in just a minute. Now we are going to need to change the data we send across to. Currently we're sending the plain text data. What we want to do is generate a URL. We're actually going to create a completely separate function for generating a location message and we'll call it generate location message. Now this function is going to take some arguments to generate the data. Just like we have for the generate message function, we're going to start with the from name. Then we're going to move on to the data specific to this function. That's going to be the latitude and longitude. I'm going to remove our template string and we're going to pass in the raw values. The first value will be chords.latitude and the second one will be chords.longitude. Now it's the second coordinate value, but it is indeed the third argument. With this arguments list set up, we can actually go ahead and define generate location. We'll be able to export it, require it in this file, and then everything is going to work as expected. Let's go ahead and load it in up top before we actually add it to the message file. Right here, we load in generate message. Alongside of that, we're going to load in generate location message. Excellent. Let's save server.js and move into our message file. Now, the function that we're about to create is going to look really similar to this. We're going to take some data in. We're going to return an object. The big difference is that we'll be generating that URL as well. Instead of from text and created at, we're going to have from URL and created at. Right here, we can make a variable. We can call this variable generate location message, and we can go ahead and set it equal to a function that takes those three arguments from latitude and longitude. Awesome. 
Now we can finish off the arrow function, adding the arrow and our curly braces. And inside of here, we can get started by returning the empty object. Now we're going to set up those three properties from the URL property and created at. From is going to be easy, just like we do for generate message. We're simply going to reference the argument. The URL one is going to be a little trickier. For now, we'll set that equal to an empty template string. We'll come back to it in a moment. And finally, created at. Created at, we've done that before. We're going to set it equal to a timestamp by getting a new date and calling get time. Now for the URL, we're going to need to use that exact same format that we just typed into the browser, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com forward slash maps. Then we got to set up our query parameter, adding our question mark and our Q param, setting it equal to the latitude followed by a comma followed by the longitude. Right here, we're going to inject the latitude. Then we're going to add a comma and then we're going to inject the longitude. Awesome. Now we're done. Generate location message is going to work as expected, although you will be writing a test case a little later on. For now, we can simply export it. I'm going to export, generate, location, message. Awesome. Now the data is going to flow from the client by calling emit, passing in generate location message. We're going to get the latitude and longitude. Over inside of the server, we are then going to emit the new location message event with the object that we just defined over inside of generate location message. The last piece to the puzzle to really get all this working is to add an event listener for the new location message event. Right here, we can call socket.on to do just that. We're going to pass in our two arguments. First up is the event name we want to listen for, new location message. And the second and final argument is our function. This is going to get called with the message information once the event occurs. Now that we have this, we can go ahead and start generating the DOM elements that we want to spit out to the user. And just like we did above, we're going to make a list item and we're going to add our anchor tag, our link inside of it. Then we'll be replacing this method completely in a few videos, but for now, it's a simple way to get started. We're going to make a variable called list item and we're going to make a new element using jQuery. As that first argument, we're going to pass in our string and we are going to go ahead and set it equal to the list item just like we did above. Next up, we can go ahead and create the second element we're going to need. I'm going to make a variable. We're going to call this variable a for the anchor tag and we're going to set it equal to the return value once again to a call to jQuery. And this time around, we're going to create the anchor tag. Now the anchor tag uses the a tag just like this. And the contents inside of the tag, that's the link text. In our case, we're going to go with my current location. Now we are going to be specifying one attribute on the anchor tag. This is going to be a non-dynamic attribute, meaning it's not going to come from the message object. This one is going to be called target. And we're going to set target equal to inside of quotes underscore blank. When you set target equal to blank, it tells the browser to open up the URL in a new tab as opposed to redirecting the current tab. If we redirected the current tab, I'd get kicked out of the chat room if I clicked one of the links. With the target set to blank, we'll simply open up a new tab to view the Google Maps information. Next up, we're going to go ahead and set some properties on these attributes. We're going to set the text using li.text. This is going to let us set the person's name as well as that colon. Right inside of template strings, we are going to inject the value message dot from. After that value, we're going to add a colon and a space. Next up, we're going to go ahead and update our anchor tag. A dot ATTR. You can set and fetch attributes on your jQuery selected elements using this method. If you provide one argument, like target, it fetches the value, in which case it would return the string underscore blank. If you specify two arguments, it actually sets the value. Here we can set the href value equal to our URL, which we have under message.url. Now you'll notice for all of these dynamic values, I'm not simply adding them in template strings up above. Instead, I'm using these safe methods like li.text and a.attribute. This prevents any malicious behavior if someone tries to inject HTML, they shouldn't be injecting using this code. With this in place, we can now go ahead and append the anchor tag to the end of the list item, which is going to add it after the text we just set using li 
dot append. And we're going to append the anchor tag. And now we can go ahead and add all of this to the DOM using the exact same statement we used above. I'm going to copy it and paste it down below. It's fine that we pasted this line for the moment. We'll be tweaking both of these functions later to use a different system for rendering anyways. But with this in place, we are done. Now I'm going to save index.js and restart things over in the browser. We made quite a few changes, so it's all right if you had a few typos for the second, first, or third time. As long as you're able to track them down, it's no big deal. I'm going to refresh both of my tabs over inside of Chrome. This is going to get the new connections up and running using the latest client side code. And to kick things off, I'm going to send a simple message from the second tab to the first tab. It's showing up here in the second tab. And if I go over to the first tab, we see user test right here. Now I can click send location. This is going to take about one to three seconds to actually get the location. Then it's going to go through the socket IO chain. And what do we get? We get the link, my current location showing up for user one and for user two. Now, if I click that link, it should open up a brand new tab with the proper URL, the latitude and longitude information rendered in it. And what do I get? I get just that right here. We have the location for the user who clicked that send location button. With this in place, we have a fantastic geolocation feature. All you do is you click the button. It fetches your current location, no matter where you are, and it renders a clickable link so anyone else can view it inside of Google Maps. Now, before we go, I would like you to add a single test case for that brand new generate location message function over inside of the terminal. I can shut down the server and use clear to clear the output. And if I run our test suite using NPM test, we see that we have our one test and it's passing. Your job is going to be to add a second over inside of message dot test dot JS. We'll get started together right here. We're going to add a describe block. We're going to describe the following function generate location message and you're going to be responsible for adding a test case inside of the callback in here you're going to call it it should generate correct location object next up we can go ahead and add our function this is going to be a synchronous test so there is no need to add the done argument and your job is going to be to write a test case pretty similar to this one. Although instead of passing in from and text, you're going to pass in from latitude and longitude. Then you're going to make some assertions about the values you get back. Make sure the from property is correct. Make sure created at is a number and make sure the URL property is what you'd expect given the input. If I input a latitude of one and a longitude of one, I would expect to see the URL like this where the latitude is replaced by the number one and the longitude, excuse me, the longitude is replaced by the number one and then the latitude as well. This would be the value that I would expect over inside of the test case, given an input of one and one. Now your job is going to be to write that test case, then run it and make sure everything passes over inside of the terminal. Take a moment to knock that out when you're done test it, then click play. All right, hopefully you didn't have too much trouble with that. To get started, I'm going to make a few variables. I'm going to make a from variable and I'll set that equal to something like deb. Then we can go ahead and create a latitude variable. I'm going to set that equal to 15. And we can go ahead and create a variable longitude. Setting that equal to something like 19. And then I can go ahead and finally create a URL variable. The URL variable is going to be the final result, the URL I would expect to get back. Now that URL is going to be inside of quotes, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.google.com forward slash maps. And then we're going to add the appropriate query parameter given the information we're going to pass in. If the latitude's 15, we would expect 15 after the equal sign. And if the longitude is 19 after the comma, we would expect 19. Now that we have that in place, we can actually go ahead and call our function storing the response. I'm going to make a variable called message. Then we're going to go ahead and call generate location message, which currently isn't required. We can do that in just a second. And we're going to pass in our three arguments from latitude and longitude. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and also pull off generate location message right here generate location message. Excellent. 
Now the only thing left to do is make our assertions. We're going to start much the same way. I'm actually going to copy these two lines down below. We're expecting the message.createdAppProperty to be a number, which it should be. Then down below, we're expecting message to include a from property equal to deb, and we're going to expect it to have a URL property equal to the URL string we defined above. If both of these assertions pass, then we know the object returned from generate location message is correct. I'm going to rerun the test suite over inside of the terminal. And what do we get? We get a failing test. Here we're expecting that some object with created at from and URL equals some other object. Now, as you can see, there's a discrepancy here. The queue was left off in the URL right here. Over inside of our test case, all I need to do is fix that, save it, rerun the test suite, and this time everything should work as expected. These error messages are super useful. It can take a little bit of time to dig into the details. You have three properties and you have those three properties twice. So it can take some time to figure out where you went wrong. But in this case, I clearly went wrong inside of my assertion. And a test case is only as good as the assertions you have in place. And that's it for this one. We have geolocation all set up. We have our link rendered. We are in great shape to continue on. I'm going to go ahead and add a commit over inside of the terminal. I'm going to run the clear command to clear the terminal output. Then we'll run git status to see all of our changed files. And we can use git commit with the am flag to add a message for this one. Add geolocation support via geolocation API. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and commit this and push it up to GitHub. And we can also take a quick moment to deploy this to Heroku as well using git push Heroku master. This is going to deploy our latest code, which has geolocation stuff built in. And we'll be able to run this. And this code is going to run on things like the Chrome mobile browser because we'll be in HTTPS. Google Chrome's browser on mobile and other mobile browsers have pretty strict security guidelines as to when they'll send geolocation information. It is going to need to be over an HTTPS connection, which is exactly what we have here. I'm going to open up our Heroku app in a few tabs. We'll open it up here and we'll also open it up in a second tab. I'm going to click that send location button. I do need to approve this since it's a different URL. Yes, I do want them to be able to use my location. It's going to grab the location, send it off, and the first tab gets the link. I click the link and hopefully we get the same spot and we do. That's it for this one. I will see you next time.